Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee. We are not in the greenhouse today because two days ago we were in the greenhouse. Two days in a row. It was wonderful. It was almost 50 degrees. The snow was all gone. It was like really spring outside. Today we've got a, I don't want to say a blizzard. We've got a snowstorm. Outside, I really should show you. I think I will. Okay, take a look at that, friends. We got like seven inches of snow, maybe eight inches of snow now, okay? If you can see my table there. Anyway, on that table, there's about seven, eight inches of snow. We got all that snow this morning, and we're gonna get hit again probably about six o'clock tonight, but look at all that snow. And look at the greenhouse. There's a little bit of snow on top. All that out there. We're looking out my door. There was no snow a couple days ago. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> they say in Michigan, if March comes in like a lamb, it'll go out like a lion. Well, it's going out like a lion, friends. So there you have it. Isn't that nuts? That's what we got outside today. So we're cooking today. Um, it's late in the afternoon, but that's all right. I got a couple things I'm going to do, um, which I probably won't put that on video. I got to do a lunch lady pizza for my neighbors. They ordered a pizza. I love it. <laughs> and I've got 10 pounds of burger that I want to cook up and, you know, divvy up for the freezer. And I've also got 10 pounds of sausage. I am working on, um waffle breakfast sandwiches for the freezer and they turn out beautiful I've, I've made a few of them before and i thought you know what i want to make a bunch and get them in the freezer because they are wonderful and my husband loves them so i'm gonna dedicate this five pounds of sausage to to that we're gonna do that in a sheet pan because i bake it in the oven easiest way to do it i'll show you and then the other five pounds i'm just gonna cook up and um, divvy up for the freezer so that way I have burger already cooked and sausage when I need it for freezer meals or whatever because I still have my peppers that I want to do stuffed peppers with and I want to mix um, stuffing and a little bit of burger and sausage in them. So we're going to set this aside because I'm going to show you how I put this sausage together. Okay, and my hands are clean. We're gonna set our oven. I love this thing. We gotta hit bake. It's already set automatically to 350. There's nothing in it. We're gonna start. 350. Okay, I'm gonna take this entire five, five pounds. I don't want any more than five pounds. Yeah, exactly five pounds. And we're gonna put it on this tray. This is easy. This is so much easier than patting up and making separate patties. I just put it on the tray and I slice it or I cut it all up. So this is gonna go on here. This this is this is hard to get out of there. I'm just gonna use some scissors on this. I'm gonna poke a hole right there and run it right down. That way there's none wasted. All right, so now I save these little bread size. So I'm making so lots of bread. We got that on there. You're gonna wanna oil up your hands. And I mean really, really good. Okay, get them all oily. And then we're gonna just start pushing this down. Otherwise your hands are gonna stick to this. Well, especially this. This is what my butcher made. And he made this fresh yesterday. And I bought 10 pounds of it. <laughs> I love it. Just pat that all out. Get it in all the corners. We can get about 24 sausage patties out of this. 20, yeah, 24. And uh, it'll be good for the sandwiches and what I have left over from the sandwiches if I don't use it all I'll just freeze them 
for the next round go round. I hope everybody's doing good today. I was so excited yesterday. I was out in the greenhouse having a ball. I did some planting with my neighbor. No, I didn't film it because my neighbor was with me and I don't want to do that. That's like putting somebody on the spot. So, but I still got a lot more to do and we will be out there again. Okay, now I'm just gonna spread this so it's as even as can be. in the corner and I've done this before many times um, and it doesn't it doesn't get grease all over your oven it, now it gets greasy but it doesn't drip all over the oven so that's it let me wash my hands and if you don't want to touch it with your bare hands you can wear gloves but you will still have to oil those gloves. Okay, now, that's good. We're just gonna put this in here. I know this is preheating, it isn't gonna hurt it a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there because it's gonna stay in there till it's done. Okay, somebody asked me, you know, I'm still getting used to my stove, I love this thing, but somebody asked me if I could put it where the griddle would be if it would be better for my big pan to be in the middle of my stove and set up on the corner. So we're going to try that out and we're going to see. Now I got to look down here and see where the burners are. Oh yeah, the burner's hitting the, it's hitting the pan. Oh, that's the back one. All right, we'll try that. Might work. But we're going to get this cut up or um, put in the pan and get this cooked up. I got to get my burger cooked up. I'm just going to put them in um, pans when they're done cooking until they're cool enough to bag up for the freezer. And then we're going to do some of the uh, waffle breakfast sandwiches. So that will be good. Well, that's pretty slick, isn't it? We got a little bit on there. Don't want to waste none. And the garbage that goes. All right. This is going to be great. So, you've all seen me fry up sausage many times, but I thought this will give us a chance to do some talking. A little bit of chit chat. And I want to show you something else, too, because um, I, I know I haven't done a chit-chat in a while, and I really should. But I, I can't wait for this one. I have to show you this. You're going to just fall out of your chairs laughing over this one. I love it. So let me get this broke up a little bit. Okay? I don't think I like that there because you know what? That is heating up my face so we're going to turn it back here wrong one. <laughs> oh, i love this thing i always ask you you got your bowl of coffee because you know i love i drink my coffee it's like a little soup bowl <laughs> it's a nice big bowl and it holds a beautiful cup of coffee well a lady friend of mine sent me this. This, friends, is a bowl for coffee. Look at that. This has, I love my coffee. Hello, friends. I'm Renee. Mr. Wayna um, doesn't like mushrooms. She's got all kinds of stuff on here. Those are beautiful. My family loves pepper. And last but not least, for those of you who remember Mr. Wayna in our live stream, the Mad Whacker. <laughs> he told you the story about the Mad Whacker and the picture of Michigan. Plus, I got a um, coaster with the state of Michigan on it. I love this, friends. And this is going to sit on my pantry table each time I do a uh, chit-chat. 
I love it. Absolutely. I'll show this in my chit chats. I'll show this in my live stream. Thank you so much for making and sending this to me because I love it and I'll keep it forever. Okay. Well, I need to turn, turn it so it's not too hot. I like to have this handle on the outside so I have something to hold on to it doesn't get hot. So we'll get this busted up. I'm going to put this probably like in little one pound bags and uh, I'm going to be able to use some of this for my pizzas, some of this for my um, stuffed peppers, and some of it for potato soup. It's just, this stuff is wonderful. He does make this into links as well, but I don't like the links. I mean, I do, it's all the same sausage, but I, I like it bulk. Anyway, so I got that going. We're gonna do the um, waffle. Um, that's gonna take about a good half hour in there. But we're gonna make the waffle breakfast sandwiches and they're wonderful. And I do the sausage in the oven, but I do the waffles and the eggs right in the waffle iron. Separately, of course, but I'll show you that. Works out really good. The eggs are a little tricky to get out of the wa out of the uh, waffle iron, but it, it it works. It works nice. So we'll make some of them. I I need to make a bunch of them. And I'm gonna keep you right with me because we're having like a massive cooking day. <laughs> Getting all my supplies ready. I should chop up an onion for the burger while I'm doing this. No, I don't need to chop up an onion. I got onion in the freezer that I'll get. And I'll get that for when I get the burger going. I like to put a little onion in the burger. And I got some nice garlic this time. I got a big jar of minced garlic, so I can add a little garlic to that burger too. It goes good with anything. And it's still not obligated to a certain dish. But back to the greenhouse. The heater's working beautiful in there. Mr. Wayne went out there this morning and he said it had shut off. But he was thinking that it got, you know, maybe some air in the line and it blew it out. But he turned it back on, nothing was froze. And uh, it's done good ever since. And we've got this wet, eight inches of wet, heavy snow and that heater in the greenhouse has kept it all melted off the top so there might be a little bit of snow on the top but not enough to damage it so that was pretty good I was really pleased about that and uh, it was so nice to be out there planting in there yesterday oh it's like therapeutic you know last year this time was rough because I was with my mom and of course she come first above above all so everything around me suffered my greenhouse you know everything and that's okay but this year i'm at it full blast it's therapeutic i think of my mom when i'm in there because she'd love to be in there putzing around and that's all right and you know we, we grieve like that and it's just fine but it is therapeutic planting seeds i love it and all the seeds i got and then my neighbors got a whole bunch of seeds and I know with um, transplanting, and as much as I'm going to grow this year, a lot more than I've grown any other year, um, I had to get some more trays and inserts. So I ordered another case of each of those today. So those should be here in a couple weeks too. So it'll be good. I got a pan for this, so when it gets done, I'm going to put it in the pan. And watch, as soon as this gets done. Mr. Wayner will he'll smell it. He'll be out here picking in it, <laughs> having to taste it. He's out there with our grandson. And so many of you asked me in the video that we had cleaning and organizing for the greenhouse uh, if that was Gussie Boy. 
that uh, that's Alaric that's here with us today. Gussie Boy is younger than Alaric. So that's Lily's son, our youngest daughter together. We've got eight children together. He's got five from a previous marriage, and I've got two from, or three from, from a previous marriage. So Lily is the youngest of all the children, is the youngest girl, and that's her son. She had to have, um, she, she underwent some surgery this last week, so we're keeping them for a week so she can just kind of recuperate and, you know, just rest and, and heal up. Because he's a handful. Oh, my word, is he a handful. He's a dolly pie. I just love him. And he loves his papa. You guys aren't kidding. He loves his papa. All right, that's getting pretty close to done. So we're going to just let that go just a few more minutes. I'm going to get this put in the pan after it's done, and then I'll be back and we'll get this burger done. i got to go get the onions. Okay. I have got this pan for the sausage. It's all done. And then when it cools in this pan, I can go ahead, and I know it's dirty in a few pans, but that's all right. I was so tired yesterday. We were out planting in the greenhouse. I never... I shouldn't say never because I have a couple of times. We were out planting in the greenhouse. We were out there all day long and I was just literally exhausted. I come in and my neighbor, her and her little girl came, you know, I told them just to eat dinner with us if they want, you know. So she come out, well, I made a big old pan of goulash and I was so tired after I got done eating that goulash. I looked at those dishes and I did what my daughter does. Or what my daughter told me. She says, yep, you just look at those dishes in the sink and you say good night and turn off the light because you know they'll be there in the morning waiting for you. And that's what I did and I went to bed. My dishes in my sink were to the top of my um, faucet. I had so many. But it was pans and, you know, uh, my big old colander and, oh, I did them this morning. That worked out just fine. All right, now I'm going to dump this, but I got to let this cool a little bit. I'm going to dump that now. I usually dump that in a quart jar. But see, I got all that sausage. That'll be wonderful. And the sausage in the oven is doing good. Beautiful. I need to get some hot pads down. And... I'm going to pour this in a pan. How like that? But today I'm not too tired to do all my dishes, so it'll work just fine. Okay, here we go. Pour, 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 baby. And we're going to use the same pan for our burger. I'm going to dirty up six other pans, but I'm going to use the same pan for a burger. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. We're going to turn this. Which one is this? Okay. I'm still not used to the, uh, the light, you know, lighting the burner and turning it. I'm just used to turning it on. So we're going to poke this and break this plastic. We'll do the same thing with this. All right. I love having cooked burger in the freezer. Absolutely. And then I got ovens or onions, and when I get this broke up, he ground this fresh this morning. When I get this broke up, I'll throw the onions in there. This is 10 pounds. I love this big old daddy pan. And you know, anything that I use in my kitchen, you know, the aprons that I wear, because so many people ask me where I get my aprons from. I always get a lot. I'm an Amazon junkie. I get everything through Amazon. I'm a Prime member, so I get free shipping, and I buy a lot from Amazon. Anyway, um, 
I'm going to turn this down because I don't want this to burn. I don't need, I don't need to cook it that fast. But anything that I have that I use, I put a link in the description box. And for those of you, you know, some people said they couldn't find it. If you go, let's see. That should be good. I don't need too many there. If you go to my video description, you'll see a uh, little link there that says show more. When you click on that, show more. And you go down beyond, because that's where I always keep my recipes. If you go down just beyond that, about midway down below those recipes, that's where you're going to find all the links to Amazon to everything that I use that I show you in my videos and whatnot. It'll all be in there. Okay. I'm just going to let this cook away because I can't do anything. I use my waffle iron because my counter is... It, it, it's crooked. Nothing in my house is straight, but my stove is level. So I put my waffle iron on a tray on top of my stove. So I can't make the waffles or nothing until I get this done. That's why we're going through this. And my neighbor just called me and said that they uh, they're going to do something else for dinner. So she wanted to cancel her pizza. I told her I'd make her one for her freezer. And then we're gonna do some freeze drying. I got um, I got some. What is it? The government cheese that I told you I get. I had another person bring me a whole bunch of it, and they asked me, "Can you freeze dry it?" I said, "Yes, you can freeze dry cheese. Freeze dries beautifully." I said, "But you know, it's easier to work with." If you freeze dry it, shred it. And when I shred my cheese, I usually get it ready for the freezer. Um, a lot of people don't like to buy shredded cheese in the store because they say it's got wood pulp. Even though it really isn't wood pulp in it, they use the cellulose that they ex extract from the wood pulp. And that's a non-caking agent. Well, um, cornmeal, or not cornmeal, but cornstarch, will act the same way. So when I grate my own cheese, and I do got a video on it, when I grate my own cheese for the freezer, I just mix a little bit of cornstarch in it, and it doesn't cake and stick together. So I'm gonna do that with the cheese that they give me to do, and we're gonna freeze dry it instead of freezing it. I told them I'd freeze dry it for them. That's doing good. We're going to let that cook. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. And I'll be back when that's done. Howdy, friends. Going out to get my wife the honeydew list. <laughs> Battling. If he can get out of the driveway. It hasn't been plowed. So. Okay, I'm going to save these. Be careful. We... Our local butcher is literally two blocks, two blocks away from us. So you just, it's, you get there in two minutes. But getting out of the driveway is another thing because you see in our driveway. And when the, the village plow goes by, they always plow us right in. They plug our end of our driveway up tighter than crazy. So. And my cousin always plows for us, but I said, you know what? We're really not going anywhere, and this snow will all be gone in a couple days. So I told him he didn't have to worry about trying to venture out to plow us out. My, We got a four-wheel drive, a great big one-ton four-wheel drive truck. It should be able to get over the top of that. All right, you know what? I got that burger all cooked up. I got some red skin potatoes boiling away over here and I'm just gonna whip together real quick for dinner before we get busy with our waffles some hamburger gravy real simple this hamburger is all cooked so this will be easy to put together 
I'm not going to put all this flour in here, but I'm going to put a little bit in here. Oh yeah, I think I got enough flour in there. It's just kind of like eyeballing it. We'll let that flour cook, taste cook out. It'll be good. I'm just making this real basic and simple because we got the little guy. And uh, I'm not real fond of Worcestershire sauce, so I'm not going to put any of that in here. I'm just going to do a little bit of spices, some garlic and salt and pepper, and that's about all I'm going to put in it for this time. And uh, that's it. Just quick, fast, and in a hurry for dinner. Oh, I love that. I love those, little, uh, those yummy bits that get on the bottom of your pan. Nice. Perfect. Okay, now I'm also going to eyeball my milk. Okay. And we'll start with this. And this milk will act like deglazing the pan, too. Okay, so while that's going, I'm going to put a little salt and pepper. And I got my garlic powder in there. So there's some salt. I'm going to put a little more pepper in there because like my coffee cup says, my family loves pepper. And I got a little bit of garlic powder here. I'm only going to put a little bit in there. That's pretty stout garlic powder. That was my own freeze dried. So it'll be like granules more than garlic powder once it rehydrates. And this has got to come up to a boil again. And it's all off the bottom of the pan so that it'll get nice and thick on there. Not too thick. You can make this as thick or as thin as you want. Let's check these potatoes. Okay, those are done. So, I'm going to turn that off. Just leave them there for a second. This will thicken up as it comes back to a boil. I'm going to take these. I love this stove, friends. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to drain these just with the lid. Okay, so now I can put a little bit of butter in them. And I got the milk out. So, I'll let this butter melt in there. So I put the milk in there. Okay, that's doing good. That will thicken up and be beautiful. And if you make this, and just by mere chance you don't get it thick enough, you can thicken it with a little cornstarch. All right, that's going in the potatoes. That's going to melt in there. This, see how that's thickening up? That is going to be thick enough. And delicious. I better take a taste. I'll use my flour spoon. I'm trying it down a little bit more. We'll give this a taste. Mmm. 
Oh, that's good. But it does need a little, oh, it's nice and thick. Needs a little more salt and pepper. About another good teaspoon of salt. A little more pepper. And I'm going to turn that off because that's done. And that's just as thick as I want it. Perfect. I don't think it needs anything more. You could put mushrooms in here. You know, you can make this the lazy way. And that's with your burger. Some cream soup. Like cream of mushroom or cream of chicken. And if you do cream of mushrooms, oh my gosh, big chunks of mushrooms and onions are good in here. But y'all know Mr. Wayne won't touch anything with mushrooms in it. So that's that. But even the lazy way is it's good. That's it. That's done. All right, now I'm going to smash up the potatoes. I can get this out of here. Then we can have some dinner, and then we'll uh, get our waffle breakfast sandwiches done. Because the uh, um, sausage is done. I got. I still got it sitting in the oven, but it, it is done. And. Uh, I'll get these mashed up. We'll have some nice mashed potatoes with that hamburger gravy over them. And they'll be wonderful. And it's a quick and easy meal. If you don't want to spend half the evening cooking, get your hamburger all made up beforehand. Because even when it's frozen, you can just put it in your fridge and let it thaw out overnight. And it's ready to go the next day. And you can add your goodies to it. And it'll be good. All right. That's good. I'm not even going to serve a salad. I'm not serving anything with this. Except what I got right here. Because uh, I got more cooking to do. Okay, now that's a good plate for my husband. See how nice and thick that is and beautiful? Okay. Let's put that right over there. Look. Makes a beautiful dinner. Beautiful, quick, and easy dinner. All right, friends. I'm going to go have dinner with my family. As soon as we're done with dinner, I'll get this a little bit cleaned up, and we will get our waffles, um, our waffle breakfast sandwiches going. Okay, friends. <laughs> I am bagging this up. My burger and my sausage. perfect. I'm doing it in quart size because, you know, there's only two of us. And if there's any more here or I use it for freezer meals or anything, I can, I can do more. one mm. 
Okay. I'll go get this in the freezer. And I'll see you back here in a few minutes. And everybody always asks me how I clean my cast iron pans. I will show you. They go right down in my hot soapy water. Just like so. That might have to sit in there a minute. I also have, I'll show you here if I can get it. Maybe this little, well this thing don't belong in here. No. This little thing that scrubs them. It's good at scrubbing your cast iron. My friend got me one of these quite a while back. And I do like them. But I, I have to scrub mine in hot soapy water, friends. Because I cannot have any residue in my pan from another meal when I'm cooking a fresh meal. I, I can't do that. Not even with baking grease. You can't. I would never season my fry pans with baking grease and leave it in there because baking grease goes rancid. Just like on cutting boards. No, I use mineral oil on cutting boards. I don't use baking grease or any kind of oil other than mineral oil on cutting boards. I use olive oil on my pans. Yes, it can go rancid if you don't use your pan for a while, but baking grease... I think leaving that in your pan is worse. See? You just rinse it. Beautiful clean. And perfect. Right there it goes. Now this one. I got a few pieces of right now I'll throw that in the chicken bucket this one I do the same thing with my great big 17 inch one goes right in my dishwater too except I don't need that one to clean I need this one there we go I just wash it out I oil them up heat them up put a little olive oil on them and just let them sit there and cool when you heat them up, they, the pores in the metal open in the cast iron, the pores open up and it literally, you know, takes in that oil. And that, friends, over a course of a time, is what gives you the non-stick surface. So, and even if you wash them, I, I still, they're all non-stick and I wash them all the time. So I would never believe anybody that tells me, oh, you can't do that. They won't be non-stick. Well, mine are, and I do it. So, I gotta wash the outside of this one. All right, here we go. That is good. Now this one, I lean right there.
Well, good morning, friends. It is another day. <laughs> I had every intentions of doing my waffle breakfast sandwiches last night, but it just didn't work out that way. I ran out of time and I got tired, so today is a whole new day. There you go. Say hello, friends. Say good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? How is everyone? You can tell me your Nana's making waffles. And pancakes. Yeah, and pancakes. And eggs. Oh, yummy. And butter. And butter? Oh, got to have butter. What? Got to have butter. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna go sit with Papa while Nana cooks? Yeah. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> I love them. Okay. I told you it was a busy day yesterday. And I Yeah, that'll work. Um Yeah, I was just a little too tired last night. Enough said. <laughs> so we are here today. Okay, I am going to um, get a butter knife. I'm going to whip up this waffle mix. And I'm using the basic waffle recipe in the book that came with my waffle maker. Just simple and basic. So I'm going to use four cups because, no, yeah, I'm going to use four cups because what I don't use for the sandwiches, I'm going to put in the freezer for other breakfasts. Okay? Now we're good. I may even make more because if you're going to make it, you might as well go all out and make a whole bunch and stock your freezer. So we're going to need sugar, and I'm just going to get it right out of the cabinet here. So it calls for, I got to quadruple this. So one, it's going to be four tablespoons of sugar. So it would be, not that one, a quarter cup. There we go. Quarter cup of sugar. And four teaspoons of baking powder, which would be like a heaping tablespoon. So we'll give it a good old heaping tablespoon. Then we're going to need a teaspoon of salt. I like these new um, measuring spoons that I got. I like them. My glass ones, I just trash them. Absolutely. I break them. I, I just, I drop, I trash them. Can't do it. Oh, I forgot eggs. I need four eggs. We'll get those out right now because I'm also going to do more eggs. I'm going to take our sausage out. I packaged that up last night. I'm going to keep all these eggs up because I'm also going to do the eggs for these right in the waffle iron as well. So we got four beautiful eggs here. These are my big, beautiful jumbo eggs. I love them. I'm going to do four in there. That made a bit of a mess. There we go. Four eggs. And we're going to need four cups of milk. This is a quadruple batch, so it works. I'm 
Now this is going to need, it calls for two tablespoons of melted butter or vegetable oil. So four is a quarter cup, so I'm going to need a half a cup of oil to go in here. Ooh, we got that right here. All right. Okay, we'll set that back aside. That one's clean, and we are going to get a whisk out and get this whisk out. I'm so used to having my stuff hanging that that drives me nuts. But oh, so many people have asked me, when am I going to put my stuff back? hang up hang back up behind my stove but i'm not going to do that because my neighbor and i think i've said this before my my neighbor is a like mosaic artist she's known all around the world my she's on the left side of me and uh she is known all around the world for her mosaics and she's gonna make me a piece that's gonna hang behind my stove here, and it's gonna have my channel name on it, Little Village Homestead. So I don't wanna put my stuff hanging up there behind it and cover that up. So that's why I gotta get used to it being back in a uh, container. And I, I just, I don't like it, but that's all right. We'll get this mixed up real good. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so here we go. And it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a spray. Real good. I don't want nothing sticking in there. And I'm going to put just about a cup and a half in here. And we're going to close that down. And it's going to take about between three and four minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these. I need my dish. And then we'll get the uh, eggs going. You know what? In fact, I could crack some of these eggs. Um, no, I'm going to need a bigger bowl. I'm going to need to wait. When I get this done, I'll crack the eggs. My sausage turned out nice. I'll show you that. See how nice that turned out? I put it in the fridge and that would be... I got the perfect size for each waffle. Nice. These make some nice big breakfast sandwiches. It's a full meal. It's got the eggs, the waffles, and the sausage and the cheese, which I'll get out later when we get ready to put it all together. All oh, those are gonna be beautiful. And if you're wondering why I'm putting this on my stove, it's because my stove is level. My counter takes a dive. So I don't want everything to go on the one side of the waffle iron. I gotta have it nice and even and see, it's doing beautiful. I also need to fill, while that's cooking, I need to fill up my olive oil. And if anybody wonders what kind of olive oil I use, it's a Mediterranean. It's packed in Italy. I love that olive oil. It's quite expensive, but I got it the last time I got it on sale. It's usually like 12 to $14 a jar. And last time I got it on sale for uh, seven bucks a jar, I got a half off. So it was kind of nice. I usually buy 
my oil, my olive oil in great big um, metal containers, like a gallon size. But these, I couldn't resist. They were on sale at such a good price. Completely 100% olive oil packed in Italy. So it's imported and I love it. I don't like some of the cheaper brands of olive oil because they blend it with other oils, mostly canola oil. And I can't, I can't do canola oil. That stuff just about kills me. So that's ready. That's filled up. And I think this is good enough for my sandwich. I just take it out like so, set it on my tray, put some more in there. Beautiful. All right. Okay. I got this one. All right, we got that last one in there. So now we're going to crack. We've got enough to make one, two. We got enough to make eight sandwiches this morning. I wonder how that's going to do. Yeah, eight sandwiches. This this last little one will go in the fridge. So we're going to do six because I got jumbo eggs. So we're going to do six nice big eggs in here. <laughs> Is he waving? What you doing, Muffin? I'm trying to make it thinner. Oh, I dropped it in there. I got it. It was floating right on top. the size of those beautiful eggs. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. Maybe I should do one more. There we go. All right. So we got our eggs all in there. This is just simple. I'm not adding anything to this. I don't want those to burn. I'm just going to put a little bit of milk in here. That's it. I'll put a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Okay, we got to get this out of here. And this will go in my little bag of leftovers. So, that's good. Now, we're going to close that down, and we're going to mix these up. Because I'm not putting sour cream or anything like that like I do when I bake them in the oven. I'm just doing plain old scrambled up eggs. doing it the easy way today. All right. Those look good. So 
So we are going to do, we're going to spray this. Oh, did I put my spray away? We're going to spray this up. Nice and hot and ready to go. And one cup will equal four eggs. Okay. There we go. It'll start rising up because it, it makes them poof right up. And we got all these. These are nice. I left them in their squares so we can take them apart when we... Actually, I can take them apart right now. This one I'm going to leave aside while those eggs are cooking. I just cut them with my scissors. And these will be for our sandwiches. Beautiful. I don't want that on the side either. These are so nice to have in your freezer. And they're fun to make. You know, if you make them with the kids, like when my grandchildren come, when my granddaughters come, we'll make these. And they love making waffles in here. And eggs and cheese sandwich. We've done everything in this thing. And they like it. I give these little scraps. I'm going to give these ones to the chickens. Okay, now we're going to cut this one. And our eggs should be getting close to being done. Oh, look at them. They're going to be beautiful. Okay, so we'll stack these up right here. Because then we'll have room for our eggs on here. And we'll be good. The eggs are a little tricky getting out of there. But I'll show you how I do it. Okay, those eggs are done. So what I do is they will start to shrink. Oof. Flip them over on top of each other. And then I can lift them out with this. There we go. Looks out pretty good. Now we're going to put all this in here. That was pretty good timing. That's going to go over a little bit, but that's all right. Perfect. Let these eggs cool off. And they'll be perfect. I just cut them. They're screaming hot. Okay. Ooh. All right, friends. Now that we got all this put together, we can assemble our sandwiches. So I'm just going to do two, three, four. My table's all clean. Five, six, seven, eight. See how perfect those fit? Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so these can go. I don't want these sitting out. I'm going to put these back in the fridge right away. We sat out long enough. Okay, so then I'm going to do an egg on each one. I had a couple of them that broke on me, but that's all right. Like 
this one right here. Okay, that one broke. We'll cram that down on there. All right, now we got our cheese. That was gorgeous. My family loves these. They love them with these and with English muffins. They're not too fond of them with the bagels because they like to heat, my daughter and her kids like to heat them up in the microwave and they get a little tough when they're baked. So she always either wants the waffle ones or the English muffin ones. What takes the longest is cooking them up. All right, those are perfect. These are going to be nice. Look at the beautiful size of these. I will show you. That's like a brunch, you know, look at to my hand. That's enormous. You could cut it in half for your kids. Your husband would probably eat one of them. My husband will eat the entire one. And you know how I made the batter real simple. When you do this, you can also add a little um, maple syrup as your sweetener instead of the sugar, and it would be beautiful. Now these, I'm just gonna put over here on my counter. And we got all these. Now we're gonna wrap these up because these are gorgeous. Absolutely. A beautiful addition to the freezer, and I got some more in the freezer. So, I just wrap them like so. They're cooled off enough that I can wrap them. double wrap them and then they also go inside of a ziploc bag even though they don't last long i wrap them up like they're going to be in there for a couple months you know and these will last good for about three months in your freezer although these won't never make it to that these probably won't even last a month in there and see how they are when you wrap them nice you just take them out of the plastic wrap and put them on a plate in the microwave. They're good to go. Mine, I, I take out of the plastic wrap and I lay them on a tray in the, in the uh, oven and I heat them that way. And it works perfect. I just turn it on to about 350 until they heat through. Or this one, my new oven, has a warm a warming setting on a warm setting on it so I could just put them in there until they get warm and then they won't dry out either which is nice so I'll get these all wrapped up I'll show you how they do. And there we have it, friends. Eight beautiful breakfast sandwiches. That's how easy they are to put together. Well, another fun day in the kitchen. We did a couple of things to yesterday and today. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you give this a try. This is a beautiful way to stack your freezer with breakfast freezer sandwiches. 
It works out beautiful. They're big enough to really make a meal. You can share them between two. They're wonderful. So you all have a good day. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen, and I'll see you in the next video.